Hello. The podcast you're about to watch was recorded in early September before the spring summer spectacular Sock Along Cal ended. So it has some incorrect information in it. But I realized um, when I was going to edit the podcast I just recorded that this podcast had never been edited and I totally had spaced on that. So I still wanted to show it to you guys. It's a lot of really cool information and cool stuff that I was working on. Um, and my next podcast will be released tomorrow. So thank you guys for watching. Hello, and welcome to I'll Knit With You. My name is Rebecca. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, or Steam as Evil Twin 2. You can find Charlotte's on the blog, I'llKnitWithYou.blogspot.com. You can join the Ravelry group, I'll Knit With You, or you can email me, I'll Knit With You at gmail.com. Hi guys, how are all my owls and my use? It's good to talk to you again so soon, and of course I have another winner to announce. But since we're having an issue where I've only had one person claim their prize so far, and I know I do really, I've been doing really sporadic podcasts, um, I'm gonna go ahead and run through all the winners who haven't claimed their prize. And this super, the spring summer spectacular sock along cal does end August 15th. So make sure to get these last socks in and you can submit, submit any single sock. If you're submitting a sock designed by CC, you can do hashtag socks for CC and submit it twice. I will not be checking that. So if they're knit by, I mean, I will not be resubmitting them for you. So, um, cause I just go by post number, but if I find that, you know, you're double submitting socks that aren't by CC, then I'll delete the posts. But if you have knit socks by CC, double enter them. So all of the winners that we have are in April, it was Frosty. In May, it was Siberian Cat. In July, it was Lemmy Call. In August, it is Waifu. Now, I think the July and August winners I hadn't announced yet, so those are the two newest winners. Now, you might be thinking, hmm, with all the prizes you've mentioned, that's not enough for everybody. And you are right, because we have another prize to add to the prize list. So I'm adding this today. This is also from SSK. This is Rock and Strings Creation in the Mountain Twilight colorway, and it will do some self-striping, and it is really gorgeous. It's a lot of jewel tones. Reminds me a lot of New Orleans during like Mardi Gras. Like these are very Mardi Gras colors to me. Um, the other prizes, if you don't remember, sorry for creeping, are the Victory Sock Lemongrass colorway, the Zen Yarn Garden Pablo Picasso inspired colorway, and the Sock Project bag with a ruler, a pair of scissors, and a sock ruler, which looks like this. Sock ruler. So claim your prizes, guys. Let me know which one you want. Give me at least two or three options in case other people are claiming as well. Because I would love, because I would love to send prizes to you guys. Um, and we will have a grand prize winner for the whole thing. Um, and I'll announce all of that next week. We do not have any new fronds this week, but that is okay. It is great to see all of your returning smiling faces. Um, but we do have some blather for Labor Day. We went to Kentucky Lake. Labor Day always falls near or on my brother's birthday. And so um, Kentucky Lake is kind of like the halfway point between where me and my parents live. I don't live in the same town as them, but they live close enough to where my brother lives and so we'll go to Kentucky Lake and we'll all meet there and it's gorgeous and it's beautiful and it's peaceful and we hit a craft fair which was awesome and we go to a place called Blue's Dairy Barn which I believe is now closed for the season but they have the best hamburgers I've ever tasted easily. Um, we played, we were planning on playing some games but we didn't really get around to it. We did make puppy chow which was pretty fun um, and we just enjoyed each other's company and uh, we were at a boat one day and took that out on the lake and it was just awesome. So it was a really great way to spend the Labor Day weekend. I also recently had a board game night at my house um, with some friends. We played lots of great stuff. We played Love Letter, um, One Night Ultimate Werewolf, which sounds not as ridiculous as it is. Um, we played Exploding Kittens. We played, um, we played a big one. What, what did we play? We play, played Betrayal at House at Haunted Hill, which is a really long game sometimes, or really short depending on what you get. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. I hadn't had a board game night at my new place and so and we have a kitchen table now which we didn't have at the old place. There wasn't room for it. So it was really exciting to get to break all that in and use the leaf in my table and feel like such an adult. So it was really fun and a really good time. But all of this traveling and business hasn't stopped me from crafting. So let's move on to Blather.
let's move on to blobbins. That's what I meant. Um, I've not been spinning a ton. My spinning wheel is still on loan. My kiwi is still on loan to my friend Sydney, who's been learning how to spin. Um, I, we were going to try and get it back the beginning of September, so I'd have it for the start of term. But I honestly haven't had time to use it anyway. So I said, hey, are you still working on projects? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, well, then just keep it for now. I'd rather have it be in use than sitting here and you feel frustrated because you can't use it. Um, so that's exciting. So I have been spinning still on my hip strings spindle little thing here with my hobbledy hoy batlings I've been I was going to try and spend one battling a week because I saw that someone else was doing that I really like that but let's be honest I haven't been doing it because uh, it takes a long time to spindle spin stuff you guys and I really enjoy the practice of it but I don't always enjoy the time that it takes which I realize is ridiculous because I'm a knitter and all I do is do crafts for time but I just don't feel like I can finish thing at a speed that I like but I enjoy being able to spindle spin by the couch so it's it's a weird double-edged sword so I'd like to have something going on um, but I just don't expect to have finished yarn like anytime soon, but that's fine. In other spinning news, being in the house cup, uh, so I'm part of the Harry Potter Knit Crochet House Cup, which if you've never heard of, um, is an online Ravelry knitting game. Um, I have done a whole podcast on just how it works, so go through my archives and find it, but, um, oh, that fiber makes my nose itch. Um, it can be really enabling to be in the house cup because you mentioned something like, oh yeah, you know, I was at SSK this year and wow, those electric spinning wheels look great, but they're very expensive. And of course, someone has a solution for you in your group. Um, and so for the first time ever, I think, I heard about the electric eel wheel. Kind of hard to say. Um, and there are multiple versions that exist. There have been two Kickstarters um, for the version four and one for the version five. Um, the five is the newest one. And the four can be a little bit loud, but that's the biggest complaint about it. So, and they're much cheaper because there's a newer version out. And so I found the group on Ravelry, the Electric Eel Wheel group, and I did a search of all the forum posts uh, for for sale to see who's had sold and who had kind of gotten like, people just overlooked it or whatever. And I messaged a few people who didn't appear to have sold their tiny electric spinning wheels and I found one. Um, I got a fantastic deal on it because she included shipping in the price and the price she had already docked lower because someone else in the thread had sold theirs for that much and so she sold, me, sold it to me for that much. Um, so I easily saved like 50 or 70 dollars like right off the top which is kind of a huge number. Um, especially when you're talking about an electric spinning wheel that only costs between 100 and 200 dollars. Um, and I happen to hear about all of this right around payday, as you do, and so um, I should probably be saving that money, but I just got really excited about it, and I could do it without it being too painful, and it happened, yes. So I told her, yeah, please, yes, and so it's already in the way to me. It should be here Tuesday. Today is Sunday for me. Um, I'm really excited about it, and I would love to show you guys once it gets here. I did have requests previously for some different spinning um, videos and I was hoping to get my spinning wheel back into those once I had moved I'm still waiting on that so what I may do is once it's here do like a spindle spin demonstration and then show you my electric eel wheel for which will be very loud so I'm trying to gonna have to figure out how to accommodate for that I may um, record the video and then lower the volume and then do like a voice over it I don't know we'll see but um, I know there's they're not perfect you know they're um, a one-person engineered team but I think as far as electric spinning wheel goes, it's a great place to, place to start and it's a fantastic price point to start at because everything else that I was finding that was looking interesting was like 1k and up and that's not a number that I'm comfortable with at all. I didn't buy my spinning wheel. It was a gift to me for Christmas that several members of my friends and family went in on and so I still get a really bad sticker shock when I look at spinning wheels. Um, and so an electric wheel that costs between 100 and 200 dollars I can do that. Now, I will say that their nicer models with more stuff included do go above the 200 range, but they're never above the 300 range. So, um, and if I do like it, what I may do is then save up money for the five and sell the one that I own in order to pay for that one. So, let us see how it all works out. That's just the new up and coming stuff that I'm very excited about. Um, but let's move on to some, whoa, I'm really close to you, so I feel like I have to hold my hands by my face. I'm like voguing over here. Um, let's move on to some woes and some woes. So I have a hoe, which is a half finished object. Um, 
and it is the Speckled Space Socks. I can get this nice and close here. You're saying, Rebecca, we've seen your Speckled Space Socks. Well, this one's finished, and I'm working on a second. Sorry, I'm in a new spot. I'm trying to figure out where to put all my stuff so it's not like in the camera, but I can still reach it. So I'm doing some of this behind reaching stuff, and if that bothers you, well, I'm very sorry, but this is just what I'm working with, okay? Um, last November, my family went to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I met my brother in Nashville, and we had some time to kill, so we went to Bliss Yarn in Nashville, which is a fantastic place to buy yarn, and they were having a Miss Babs trunk sale, uh, so of course I bought some stuff, but I bought fingering weight, and I had previously bought her worsted weight stuff. And so one of the things that I bought was just this little tiny baby skein that was 33 grams, but you know how much this sock weighs? 30 grams? So I thought 33 grams, I can get away with this. And so I had turned this little chunky thing, I'm turning it into a sock. It's not very far. This will be for my detention project um, in, house the, in the house cup. Um, if you started something before the month started, then you can have to turn that into a detention. You can't turn it into a class. It kind of makes everything fair. Um, and so this will be my detention for next month because I've already got my detention in for this month. But it's getting speckly and it's sucking along and I really like how it makes this really variegated yarn kind of pull some individual colors out as a color pop. And I was kind of curious how it would look with a really variegated yarn because this yarn is not technically self-striping but it did kind of stripe. Um, and it, it looks nice but I really wanted to see what it would look like with some really crazy yarn. So I'm interested to see what this is going to look like finished. But I have too many things to talk about to, to work on this right now. Um, but hopefully it'll be done sometime in October. My next whip is one that I'm very, very excited about. This is my OWL, which is a three month long project. And it is my pavement sweater. Um, it is very tiny right now. This is my whole sweater. <laughs> um, I just started it the third because I had to wait for it to get approved. Um, and so I'm very, very excited, but this is as far as I've gotten, and I'll show you. I'm working on a really big project right now, so it's kind of taking up all of my knitting time. But I wanted to show you this one first. And this is my giant Miss Babs wheel of Zing yarn in the Kahadin base. I think that's how you say it. That's how I'm going to say it. Kahadin. Um, it's fun. So my previous Trego I knit in 10 days and I made it maybe a size and a half too big. I was using needles that were too large. I used way more yarn than I should have because uh, it was just big overall. I did felt it uh, and it fits. I don't know that you guys have seen that but it's okay. It's not great. Um, there is some puckering by my shoulders and I wish I could have just felted it back but that's not really how anything works and so <laughs> the arms are felted too so it's a little bit tighter. It's just went from being too big and comfy to being like a little snug and comfy. Um, so one of the Quidditch matches, and Quidditch is like, um, we're using a lot of house cup terms this this episode, I'm, I'm loving it. Uh, Quidditch is, there's four matches usually, and there's a lot of different ways Quidditch can work. And it goes on during classes, but there's usually limited time periods. So it's usually short, 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 and then there's a long one in there somewhere. This match is only 10 days. It started on the 7th, it ends on the 17th. And what you're trying to do is camouflage yourself or protect yourself um, from whichever fantastic beast you can think of from the Harry Potter universe. So I thought, you know what I can do in 10 days on the wrong size? I can make a Trego. And if I make it the right size and use smaller needles, I will have more yarn and hopefully, it, I mean, it'll go faster because I'm using smaller needles, but it will go faster because it's gonna work. So I am working on a Trego in the Cascade 220, oh no, what's my colorway? My colorway is on here somewhere? I don't know, okay, well, it is on, it's a heather, oh shoot, okay, well, it's a heather colorway, <laughs> heathered colorway, and um, it's on my project page for sure. So, one thing I like to do with sweaters that I don't always do, and every time I don't do it, I wish that I had, is that when you separate for the sleeves, you stop knitting everything else and you just make your sleeves. Because when you get to the sleeves, if you've done everything else, you're ready to be done with your sweater. And I feel like they don't, I, I cut them short often if it's the last thing that I make. And also it's really awkward to shift a whole sweater around while you're trying to knit your sleeves. And so I do my sleeves two at a time so that they always match when I can. 
Um, and so I started my body. Where's my body? There we go. This is my neck. Here's the back. And this does stretch quite a bit. So um, there's the top. And then here are my sleeves. My sleeves are just past the elbow. So I'm not making bad time. I do need to hopefully get these sleeves done before the weekend is over and get started on the body. Because then once the body is done, if I can have maybe two days to do the border, so I need five days to do the body or so. And I feel like that's generous because this is considerably smaller, so it will take considerably less time, right? Hopefully I can shave a couple days off this. So here's where we are at so far, and I love the pattern on these sleeves. This, this sweater pattern is just my favorite, you guys. Um, I did go down two needle sizes because I've been doing a lot of swatches lately. I know, right? Swatches, are you kidding me? But I tend to knit really loosely, and it affects everything that I want to make. Um, and so I think one of the reasons my previous Shago was extra, extra big, because it wasn't just big, it was extra, extra big, um, is because I need to go down about two needle sizes. And so I did that this time. Um, for the body, I went down two. And for the sleeves, I went down one, because I do like my sleeves kind of loose, especially in a big, puffy, comfy cardigan. I don't want to feel super constricted. And if I have something long sleeve on underneath it, I don't want it to get caught, because I hate that. So I, tight sleeves stress me out. So I'd rather have them just a little bit looser and have the body a little bit more fitted. So that's what we're going for so far. I have almost finished one skein of yarn and um, I've got this one here that's for one sleeve. The almost finished one is for the other sleeve and this is my backup for when I'm ready to switch. So it's going really, really well. This is my plan for the rest of the evening after I edit my podcast. Um, well, let's be honest, I'm gonna let my podcast process while I go knit for a while and I'll come back and I'll edit it. Well, maybe I'll be done with the sleeves before I edit my podcast, I don't know. So but that's how that's going and I'm very excited about it and hopefully it'll be done super fast. So you might be wondering to yourself, okay, well she said she finished something this month for detention. So what FO could it possibly be? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is something that I've wanted to have off the needles for a very long time, but just have had no ambition to work on it whatsoever. Um, I'm trying to figure out which is the front. I think this is the front, okay. It is my super massive Papa Freya shawl. And this shawl is ridiculous, and I started it almost a year ago, and it is gorgeous, and it is very past my wingspan. Um, I took some great photos of it that you can find on my project page. I would insert them here, but, you know, let me show it to you in person. You can go look those up. There's links on the show notes. That's what that's for. Um, it's a really great knit, but this part right here, this meshy stuff, hate that. Do not enjoy knitting mesh at all, find it super boring, find it really tedious, it just knocks the wind out of my knitting. And so, um, I got stuck about right where it starts. I mean, you can see right where this starts right here, that's about where I stopped having fun and stopped working on it. Um, and so, but now it is done. And I love this part down here. I did play some serious yarn chicken. Uh, I had to cut it about four or five rows short. So down here on the bottom where you see these little leaves, if they look a little squat on the end, it's because they totally are. Um, they should have had more time to come to a point like the rest of the leaves and the thing, but there just wasn't enough yarn for that. And so I finished the entire skein of yarn with like six inches to spare for my border. And the border has, it's a crocheted border um, where you do um, crochet three together, together and then you make so many of a chain and then you swoop back in. So there's lots of these, which I could have pinned out, but honestly, it's a little too tight for that. But I really like the way that it looks the way that it is. So I'm totally happy. Totally happy. I haven't really finished that many big shawls, big lacy shawls that I've kept. And so I love it. So anyway, that's my Papa Freya. One of my obscene goals <laughs> For uh, before the end of the year is to finish my Persian Dreams blanket. Now, if I had done two pieces a month, I would have been done by December. Easy. It's 24 blocks. If I had done two blocks a month, I would have been done. But I got eight done. And it is September, so I should have 18 done. Uh, so I'm a little short. So one of my big goals is to knit about five or six each month. They don't even take me that long, maybe a couple of days, but I have to sit down and do them. Uh, and the worst part is, is I, instead of doing a border and then having to unpick that border, I'd rather join them and to submit something to the Harry Potter Knit Crochet House Cup. You can't have any live stitches because then it's technically still in progress, but you can submit blanket squares 
if there's all if all the edges are bound off. Okay, so the problem that I have with the Papa Freya Shaw is that I like connecting them as I go, especially now that I've gotten started, but I can't submit them until I get the next one done. So I'll always be one off. You know what I mean? And so one of them is going to be a detention block and that's fine, but whatever. I don't love that, especially because I already have plans for detention. So I did get one done, but I haven't turned it in and I haven't even taken pictures of it because I have to attach another one to it before I can turn it in. So here is block number nine. I really like it. It's pretty cute, pretty fun. Um, here's the side that's live stitches. So I do need to put something over here before I can, and I don't really want to do a knit something and then take it back out because that feels like cheating to me. I want it to be done done. Um, and I've been doing the border as I go. So the border is getting really big um, and it's awesome. And I can't really show you guys the whole blanket from here because it's a hot mess and the back is crazy unwoven in disaster right now but I do think that my method of doing color work looks gorgeous um, if you want to see what this method is I there's a link in my project page to a YouTube video yeah uh, but it shows you how to do this type of color work and it's incredible I actually taught a breakout session on it at SSK so but it's perfect for this blanket so I need to be working on this but my priorities right now are Trago Persian dreams and owl but I need to work on my owl a little bit more um, but I still want to get six classes in so I'm going to show you some more stuff that I bought at SSK because it's really cool stuff that I think is worth their dyers worth talking about and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about what's going to go on for me in the Harry Potter house cap this term so if you're interested in one but not the other or whatever, I'm just letting you know now so you can fast forward or rewind or exit podcast. It's up to you. So let's talk about a few extra mustaches. So the one thing that I found that I wish I had found earlier in my shopping um, is called the Fiber Seed. And here is their tag. And the yarn looks like this. And you're thinking, okay, that's interesting, but why? what's so great about this? Planned pooling. They have this cowl that they have on their wall, um, on their booth, and it's got this on the outsides and this on the insides, and it kind of moves back and forth like this, and it's amazing. And I love plain pooling, but it's hard to find good yarn for it because it's kind of hard to know what to look for. But when you have yarn that's kind of designed for it, oh, that just makes me happy. So I feel like this is going to be a really quick knit when it happens because it'll all be stockinette stitch. I just need to do it. So it's like a project that's already done, but it's not. So we'll get there. Another dyer is Stranded Dye Works. Um, I watched, I am still watching, but I'm now behind uh, her podcast before she came to SSK. And she's amazing. I picked up two things from her. This is Flamingo Legs on Plateau. And I'd seen her talk about this one on her show and it's just a really fun idea. Um, and this one is Hazardous on Oasis. Look at those colors, you guys. It kind of reminds me of Hedgehog, especially this little bit here. So I'm interested to see like what that looks like in, in like the grand scheme of things. Now you saw me mention this one in the new prizes, but their yarn booth was like a snake in the grass. You'd look at it and you're like, oh, this is really cool. And then you're like, this is really cool. This is pretty amazing stuff. Most of their yarn is self-striping and comes in all sorts of different bases. There's fiber fuzz on this one. Um, this one is Zombies Walk at Midnight and it is a self-striping. And this is the Jitterbug fingering from Rock and String Creations. So here's their tag. And here's the yarn. So this is gonna stripe up and it's like a dark, it's like a midnight rainbow, if that makes any sense. But it doesn't have, it's got some really cool stuff in it. So I cannot wait to knit this up and show you guys. I also got the Southern Charm, um, which was the SSK colorway. And she had the cutest names for like every single stripe. So it would be like corn and butter or it'd be like country sky or would be like dirt road and stuff like this um and they're not listed on here on the 
the Hank uh, label. There we go. Um, but she did have a name, so it's really well thought out stuff. So here's those colors, and they're super cute. And this is Rock and String Creations, again on the Jitterbug Fingering, which is 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 400 yards of 100 grams. So, so pretty. They also sold fiber, and because I had taken some fractal spinning classes, I was really looking for fiber that would make sense to fractally spin. Not like bags and stuff like that, but like fractal fiber. Um, so this is their 100% Merino Wool Winter Skies. And this is going to be a really fun, really pretty fractal. And it does kind of remind me of Frozen with some purple in there. <laughs> but I love those colors, so it's okay with me. And every, so I, I went back to their booth a couple times. And every time, that was my dryer. Every time I went, they would give you another little mini skein. So I have two little minis. One of them is, oh, I think they're labeled. Maybe not. One of them is a mermaid something, and the other one is not. <laughs> it's not helpful information, but even their minis are super cute. I'm excited to put those in some blanket somewhere. Um, so one of the booths shall we say, um, I had sat next to her in my Jillian classes and I had no idea she was going to have a booth. So it was like extra exciting. It was like, oh my gosh, we're kind of friends and now, now you're here. And it is Hot King Studio. And again, I bought this because I'm thinking fractals, fractals, fractals. What do I need to buy to spin it that way? Um, so it's kind of hard to see because she's got other stuff going on in here. But there's an orange, a brown, and a teal. And this is really reminiscent of some of the earliest fiber that I bought. Um, but what she includes, which I think is really cool, is she includes a stain label for you. So you can fill out what you're going to name it. Um, it's colorway name, fiber content, what kind of twist, rip, um, wraps per inch, ounces, yardage, grist, TPI, YPP, notes. Um, and this is something you can tape around your finished yarn. And I've never seen that before, but it makes so much sense. She also had really, really cool superhero bags. So I'm going to show you her card really close. If I can figure it out. There you go. Um, so that is her. And she's amazing. Go buy all her things. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about some Harry Potter house cup, or Harry Potter knit crochet house cup stuff. So if you're not interested, I understand. And I won't even know. So see you later. Um, but for those who are staying, let's talk about all of my plans for this term, because I have a lot of plans. So you've seen my bright blue owl of fury, um, my pavement sweater. My broom is going to be the seasons, the fall, winter, I think it's fall, winter, seasons shawl by Knit Picks. And I bought the kit for my birthday um, back in April. And so it's all lace weight held double. So it should be pretty fast, but it's still about 3000 yards, which is an obscene number for a broom. That's more owl level, but I might end it early. I don't know. And I feel like, um, especially with those things that are two things held at once, I get real excited about them and have a crazy momentum with them. So I feel like that's going to help. I have a lot of goals <laughs> for this term and I'm not sure how they're all going to get accomplished. So we're just going to have to figure it out as we go. But um, finish my owl, finish my broom, finish my blanket um, and then I'm gonna do something that's in Slytherin because I'm in house Slytherin again and then I'm doing two terms perhaps as I travel everywhere um, I'm doing something called the grand I'm gonna aim for the grand dom dame grand dame and that means that you get 1,000 points in a term which is a lot of points I usually get about 560 so this is gonna be quite a lot of work so what you do is you aim for bonus points. You aim to do everything. So Quidditch matches, um, head mistress challenges, which I don't think I've ever actually done. Um, anywhere you can snag points, you're working to snag points. So for example, this round of Quidditch that I'm making my Trego for, it starts with 22 points, which is pretty high for Quidditch. Um, there are gonna be bonus points for a yardage. 
and um, they said they'll do bonus points for good pictures. So I just kind of have to find someone who will take a bunch of goofy pictures of me hiding in the woods with my green Trago and we'll be set. Um, and I'm really excited about it. So cross your fingers for me that I can just score tons of bonus points. That's what I need. Now each blanket square is about 100 plus yardages. If there's border on it, there's even more. So I think the one that I'm just done was 145-ish. It's on my project page for sure. I marked it out. So it's not impossible and people do it. So let's just see if I can do it. I'm pretty pumped. I uh, just can't miss anything. So buckling down. But with my new electric eel wheel, I can spin and spinning is worth like tons of yardage points. But I also need to work on my blanket. So it's just like I have all this stuff going on and I don't know when it's all gonna happen, but I can do it. I totally believe in myself. If I don't climb this mountain this term, then there's always next time, you know? Um, Slytherin is also doing something called the Horcruxes. There might be a better name for it that I, did, that I missed, but it's, um, you have to pick seven challenges for yourself and then you can assign um, some of the Deathly Hallows to some of them to make them like more intense. So my seven are Duogran Dame, which is my cloak, my invisibility cloak. Um, do all the Quidditch and all of the headmistress challenges. Do two sweaters. So my pavement and my Trago would be two sweaters. Um, do two shawls. So I turn in my Papa Freya, which I think will count for my personal goal. And then if I do my broom, that's the other one. But I also really want to knit the Viking binge in Cal shawl again, where you binge watch the Vikings and you knit a shawl during it. If I can get really far ahead, that'd be a really fun November thing to make. So that's kind of my plan right now. Um, my number five is finish my Persian dreams. So I do have to have it done before the end of term if I do it that way. Um, and that would be my stone, my, um, philosopher's stone. Um, and number six is spin a skein a month, which I think I turned in as spin three skeins total. Um, and then number seven is make gloves, which is something that I've been thinking about a lot. And I found a great pattern that I want to do. And I'm not sure what yarn I'll make, but it's going to be from Eat Sleep Knit because I'm doing it for something for there as well. Um, and that is my Elder Wand. So this is my lofty aspirational goals of ridiculousness. And I really need to get to work. Like even talking about it, I'm like, oh, I should be knitting right now because this is ridiculous. And how am I going to get all this done? But it's going to work out. It's going to be fine. I've totally got this. Um, if I don't get my Trago done in time for Quidditch, which might happen, I can knit something small and turn that in um, and make up a great story to go along with it, take some funny pictures, and it'll work for my 22 base points, and then turn my Trago in for a class. The last time I did that, I got about 70 points, which is a lot considering the base is like 15, but there's so much yardage in it, and you do it in like a short amount of time that it's whew, shoot you right up. So. These are all my plans and I'm very excited about all of them. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I have to say about everything today. So whether you are concocting ridiculous ideas of ridiculousness or if you are just crafting calmly and letting it all happen as it will, I'll knit with you. Bye guys.